So I think I know what's wrong with these 7.3 liter V8s and why they're having these lifter issues and some failures, although it's not so terrible to where it's like every single vehicle is going to have a lifter issue. But nonetheless, there are problems with these lifters on these push rod engines. And it's not just Ford. It's GM. It's Dodge, Chrysler, whatever you want to call that company. It's the same across the board. I think it is a result of a combination of things. We just got our oil analysis back from this truck. We followed the manufacturer's recommendations and the results are very interesting. So I think the OEM's factory oils being their synthetic blends, being that they're running thinner and thinner oils, it's just not adequate for this push rod design. Now these push rod engines I don't think have the most efficient transfer of power to the valve train. You've got a lot more moving parts. Well, the the overall package is smaller, but you've got a push rod there that's transferring power from the lifter, that's transferring power from the camshaft versus a direct drive system which probably would fare better in a thinner oil situation when the cam shaft is literally touching the roller rocker it's just a more efficient transfer it's a higher speed system with potentially less valve float but the thing is in our case with these pickup trucks the push rod design is adequate as far as the amount of rpms that we run on these because they're not race engines so you don't need that overhead uh, cam necessarily for the, for a pickup truck because you're not revving that i mean you're revving high but you're not revving that high you're not revving like a race engine high so it does make sense to manufacture these manufacture these engines as push rod engines but the question really is is, is the 7.3 better than the 6.2 um kind of sorta but anyway i want to dive into these uh, an oil analysis because what I did with the truck is I ran factory fill motorcraft oil. I did one oil life cycle. I did 5,100 miles, but for my driving habits, 5,100 miles was kind of pushing it with this truck. So anyway, let me pull up these analysis and we'll go over it. So the oil report says, Sean, there wasn't a ton of life left in this oil. The TBN is low at 1.7, which shows the oil didn't have much additive left in reserve. You could try switching to a different oil to see if you get a higher TBN reading. But if the low TBN doesn't bother you, you could keep running motorcraft and could probably run about 7,000 miles next time. All in all, it looks like the engine is moving, moving right along through the break-in process. Metals and silicones dropped by a nice margin showing break in washing out as expected. The slightly thin viscosity isn't a big deal. Uh, it's not due to fuel being in the oil. So very interesting. I've got thinner viscosity here and I have very low TBN, which is something that usually doesn't happen with just one oil cycle. So you know what? The Motorcraft oil is not going to be the best oil for an oil life cycle on this truck. For my use, 5,000 miles, it says we did 5,100 miles on our oil. For my use, though, that's pretty intense. And I can tell you right now, some guys will drive for 10,000 miles and have less wear on their oil. So for me, the type of work that I'm doing, that 5,000 miles was so hard. We're talking max payload. We're talking max towing we, we literally towed with this truck we literally maybe not so much with the 450 but we literally tow over the amount from time to time not every time not all the time but from time to time we tow over the actual towing of the truck and you can feel it so uh a lot of stuff here i think it's kind of interesting this that wood blackstone and i think a lot of people sometimes say i want to try different oil analysis over Blackstone because they keep telling you to run the oil longer. Like, how are you going to tell me to run it to 7,000 miles with the TBN the way it's looking and the viscosity dropping? 
what a way to get a disaster happening by continuing to run longer than that amount of time. So uh, I get a call come in here one second. And with that being said, some of these other manufacturers are continuing to want to run this older design, the pushrod design, but they're also running thinner oils than Ford. Ford runs a 5W30, and I think GM might be down to a 5W20 for their pushrod engines, and they had tons of problems. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know exactly what GM's running for the viscosity of oil. But 5W20 oil is way, 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 way thinner than uh, 5W30, significantly thinner in all in all ways like water compared to 5w30 and 5w30 is way thinner than 5w40 so all of the manufacturers are having these issues with these push ride engines i think it's because they're all being kind of forced to using a thinner viscosity oil and at the end of the day ford i don't think their their oil change interval is good enough i think their oil change interval is actually too long and it's allowing for too much uh well let me rephrase this this is not coming out right i think the oil change interval on this engine is going to be too long even though they kind of increased the oil capacity i think it's running like seven or eight quarts maybe eight quarts the motorcraft oil the synthetic blend is not good enough for this oil change interval now it's kind of it's kind of a toughie because it almost is good enough it's like right on the edge they've almost set this thing up to get the most out of that oil that i mean the oil's pretty much used up but for people that really want to protect their motor maybe it's better to switch to maybe a different oil something like an ams oil is going to give you more of that TBN, and I think it's going to test good at the end of the oil life cycle. So the Motorcraft oil, again, not particularly a cheap oil, not cheap for the consumer to, to purchase, whereas you can get into AMS oil, full synthetic, like good oil for about the same amount of money, if not less, and you can actually have a lot more protection out of that oil compared to what you're getting out of the motorcraft so my thought process get the heck out of motorcraft oil it's just too generic it's just not something that ford's putting a lot of i don't think they're putting a lot of thought into what they're doing as far as their oil their energy their change intervals a little long but if you were in a better oil and you still had tbn left and your viscosity wasn't wrecked then maybe you'd be okay to run this longer interval. Now, as far as my interval and the miles and what to do with your oil changes and should you go off of miles or should you go off of uh, the oil life monitor, I can tell you right now, I could drive this truck daily, was I've driven this truck daily, and I can drive it for 10,000 miles and it can be easy, an easy 10,000 miles, and it wouldn't hurt the truck. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be as much strain as this last 5,000 miles have been. I can put 1,000 on the front end, a plow, whatever. I can put 4,000 pounds in the bed. I can put 5,000 pounds of weight on this truck and drive it for an extended period of time. I can drive it all night. And literally not rack up that many miles. And the miles just don't correlate to the actual uses of usage of the truck. So when 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 someone says, oh, I'm, I'm changing my oil in 5,000 miles. Well, yeah, that, yeah, because you can do that if you're going to drive the vehicle in the form of a daily driver. Then you know what the vehicle does. But a truck does so many different things that it's hard to say exactly what the truck's doing for example every single time this truck goes out it's towing this big enclosed trailer it's got an eight foot wide face on it so it's got a giant windbreak on the front 
The weight of the trailer, eh, 7,000 pounds. The trailer is probably getting close to its max payload of 7,000 pounds all the time. So 7,000 pounds of, of something that's not aerodynamic, not efficient to pull in any means, hitched up to it all the time, essentially is going to double the amount of work that the motor has to do compared to just driving along, along empty or the type of driving which could be all highway. So miles, in my opinion, is just not the most accurate way, particularly with a truck. When you're talking about a passenger car, a passenger car doesn't tow anything. It doesn't really haul too much variation. Passengers, I mean, maybe there's a heavy passenger. It's just not doing this many different things. It never goes really into a four-wheel drive situation. It doesn't plow snow. It doesn't haul 5,000 pounds. So you can say, oh, miles. We can use we can use miles to measure a, a a vehicle's usage if it's a passenger car, but for a a truck, a truck is a tool and it does so many different things that it's really hard to put into one type of category what type of maintenance to do for it. You can't really say the hours. You really can't say the miles because hours and miles just don't correlate to the usage of the vehicle. Uh, even if you said 200 hours, it doesn't correlate. Now, if you want to say, hey, we're going to only follow the miles because that's the way that I've heard to do and it's a better way to do it, you could actually over-maintenance your vehicle too if you do twice as many oil changes and all that than you need to. Well, what are you really doing? If you're doing that, you could be throwing away a lot of extra money. So it's all about finding a balance to where it's cost-effective and to where it's going to be. Now, time and cost, no, not an issue for you. Time and cost is not an issue for you. You'd rather just maintain your vehicle and keep it you know, running good. Then a 5,000-mile interval will protect you if you're not towing. And if you are towing, generally speaking, 5,000 miles still might cover you depending on the type of vehicle. So on this truck, towing and hauling and everything that we did, we were at 5,100 miles with our oil life monitor. So pretty extreme situation. But the diesels for the same thing, short trips, max payload, whatever, their oil life monitor, from my experience, at least with the last diesel that I had, what I actually was going through the oil life cycles it kept me under that 5,000 miles like sometimes three sometimes two 2,500 miles I had an oil change so if there's a vehicle that would keep you under the 5,000 mile maintenance and you try to push it to 5,000 maybe that's not going to be a good situation but generally speaking though after running this oil life a 5,000 mile interval will still probably be within a one oil life cycle. I guess the question really is, is can a 10,000 mile oil life really work? Well, I think so. I'm, I'm not opposed to that necessarily. But if money is no issue, if time is no issue, then a 5,000 mile oil change can be fine even if you're changing it 50 percent early because none of that ma none of that matters to you i mean it's fine for the environment too i mean the recycling the oil anyway you're just putting new oil into the you know your oil's not used up and you're putting it right into the recycle bin and they're just like hey we're getting tbn right into the right into the recycle bin and they can just process it that much easier i don't think it's bad to do the 5,000 mile interval uh particularly if it's a passenger vehicle i've shown here that Pretty much a 5,000 mile interval will work for some extreme use. But if you're going to be using your truck more extreme than I am, which there are people out there that are plowing it way more than me, working harder than me, towing more than me daily, just getting after it more than me, who might actually fall into a less than 5,000 mile interval. Also, to, from my experience now with these trucks, the best thing to do is switch out of the Motorcraft oil and get a really top-tier synthetic 
your AMSOILs, your Pennzoil Platinum Ultras, maybe even your Mobile One high or uh, uh, Mobile One Extended Performance, something real good. Go with something good, whatever you whatever that is. It's not that big of a deal which one it is. Just go with something real good that doesn't lose its viscosity and that that doesn't lose its that doesn't lose its TPN. I would say go with something that really isn't too expensive but extends that interval. There's something that says like we can take our intervals far. Something that with the chemistry of it can maintain its TBN for like a year or whatever. That way you just know that your viscosity, your TBN just isn't breaking down. And you're over maintenancing your vehicle still in a sense because in order to honor our warranties, we can't really play with play these one year games or these 10,000 mile or some of them are claiming 20,000 miles. You can't really play play these 20,000 mile games with our factory warranties. Unless your vehicle's paid off and out of warranty and all that, then you can play that game. But for us, you know, we got to kind of, for a lot of us at least, we got to kind of play the game of maintaining a vehicle to the manufacturer's time frame. But anyway, guys, this video is running way too long. My name is Sean. This is DS Trucks. This is our 2020 two f-250 and we've also got a 2023 f-350 anyway see you guys in the next video over and out